In today's episode, we have Nikki. Nikki specializes in medical and cosmetic tattoos and is now has transitioned to the new method of creating external silicone nipples and areola prosthesis for cancer survivors. Nikki, are you joining us from New South Wales in Australia? I sure am. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for having me today. You're very, very welcome. Thank you for taking the time to come on Gentle Touch. Nikki, tell us about you. Tell us about your work. Okay, so basically I'm a medical tattoo artist. Um, so first and foremost, I um, create 3D nipple and areola tattoos um, for breast cancer patients. However, I have also now expanded into, you know, the tra- transgender community as well oh. as, yeah, so as, it's, yes, <laughs> I love your reaction, um, as well as um, anyone who's really had any breast surgery and trauma from breast surgery. So that might be areola repigmentation where they've lost some colouring in their areolas. So, yeah, so it's it's basically the 3D nipple and areola tattoo is, is creating an illusion of a protruding yeah. nipple from all different viewing a- angles and that's just using their technique of shading and, like, contouring and lines and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Oh, nice. With, so my background is in healthcare as well. So with regards to the transgender, um, I know some of my patients, depending on where I work, they will have their breasts removed if they're going from female to male. In your aspect, in the tattooing, what would it be? Would they also need um, the areola pigmentation or how does that work? Both. So so I have, in regards to a mastectomy for, for trans, yeah. trans um, so basically they can either, most of the time they can preserve the nipple and areola. A lot of the time if there is complications like necrosis, which I'm sure you're aware of, okay. um, they might lose part of the areola and, and nipple or, or sometimes it, it goes completely. So I will recreate okay. um, a 3D nipple and areola tattoo. However, most of the time I, I, I create them for women so in that case most of my transgender clients are transitioning from female to male so it's the same technique but a lot a little bit different because we have to make them more masculine and not okay. as soft and not okay. as like you know with the lines and all that kind of stuff so yeah that's that it, it, I can do the areola repigment if they've lost coloring or the whole sort of package wow it's amazing it's amazing how you're expanding your services how did your journey begin because you've been trained everywhere italy brazil usa and australia (laughs) i have and and look uh, some of them has been during lockdown to be honest um italy i flew there in april of this year um Mm -hmm. australia obviously i live here and the other countries america and and brazil were were predominantly during lockdown and during lockdown i was like i am not going to not do anything i have to keep my brain active and so i just enrolled into one some one-on-one training i only do one-on-one training that's my rule um so i just did some excellent yeah it's it's uh, selfishly i just want all the um the trainer's attention on, on I don't blame me you. and yeah the questions that I ask and I need need to because I ask a lot of questions so I yeah so Brazil was um, the Brazilian training the the American was scar camouflage and and we sort of focused on that sort of stuff but the Brazilian mm-hmm. training was phenomenal because what had happened was you know she um made us do upside down drawings to activate the right side of the brain so it wasn't just you know tattooing or learning how to tattoo a, a 3d nipple and areola tattoo because i already know how to do that it was just yeah, yeah. expanding the skills and just you know yeah and drawing like a 3d nipple and areola tattoo on my forearm using makeup one hand so just yeah learning different techniques to create the same thing it was just absolutely amazing it was one of my favorite trainings that i've ever ever done and that was that was you present with the teacher or was that online that was all online. That okay. was all online, and and you couldn't pass to the next module unless she can. She was the face of the training, so she unless she approved you, you did not move on to the next module. So it was wow. really intense. But I mean, what better time? We were during lockdown. We yeah. had nowhere to go yeah, and nothing to yeah, do. Yeah. So what better time to really focus on the training? Wow, I I love it. I love it because you made the most of it. So when. So when others gained weight, when others made babies, when others binged on Netflix, when others, you know, you found ways to keep the mind busy, to educate yourself, to learn, to to feed your career, to feed those skills, to expand and get better at what you do. And it is truly beautiful. 
it, it is amazing as well because I think when people say to you, oh, you're so you're so good or your work's great and all that kind of stuff, for me it's key to sort of remain humble and, um, you know, not take that to I'm, I'm so good and people think I'm yeah, great yeah. because what, what otherwise – you become too complacent and mm. you forget, um, you know, basically your humbleness and you you think you're too good. So you never have, you, you'll never ever, you'll never ever grow if that mm. makes sense. So the more you remain humble and the more you remain, you know, I, I've still got so much more learning to do and I've still, still got so much growth to do. And even if I do all this training and I still end up learning one thing out of that yeah. whole course, yeah, yeah. then I'm happy. Wow, that's that's truly amazing because some people once they receive the compliments, once they they become arrogant and they're like, yeah, okay, and that's oh, it. Oh, I know it all, and I'm you know been on TV and I've been in magazines, which you know I have been and all that kind of stuff. But when you when you sort of really, what am I here for, and what why am I doing this? this as a career and that's when you really need to sort of you know go and go. I'm here to just keep growing and keep yeah. learning, and so that's yeah, that's what I intend to do. When did your career begin? Like, was it in Australia? How, uh, how did it all come about? So I do come from corporate world. I'm not, yeah. I haven't sort of, you know, started off as, I didn't wake up one day and say, yeah, I want to do medical tattooing or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it's I, very niche. I, but it's very niche. There, It yeah. is very niche in Australia. There's not many of us. And, and for the prosthesis, I was the first to introduce it into Australia. However, I, I, so I worked in corporate world. So I did. I worked at the university and I worked in, you know, in payroll and a whole bunch of things. And I remember going to get my own eyebrows tattooed a long, long time ago. And it wasn't about the tattoo itself. It was about that feeling that I had after I got the tattoo done, thinking, Oh, I feel so good. I don't have to pencil them in anymore. And it was just that feeling. And then I sort of, I've always been fiercely creative. Like my whole life, I'm doodling. I'm, you know, always sort of drawing and painting and all that kind of stuff. And then I just sort of looked into it and I had to do a year of cosmetic tattooing first before I was able to proceed into paramedical training. And then I did a lot of research locally um, at the hospitals, the breast care nurses kind of saying, is there anyone that does 3D nipple and tattoos? And most, and the, the nurses were like, no, but it's brilliant. We need it here. And so I did the research first before I yeah. committed to the training. Um, and, and it's just, yeah, so I'm with many surgeons and, and it's just sort of like, like it's taken one step at a time and now I'm at the point where I was like what more can I do <laughs> and that's when I and I sort of did the prosthetics so yeah wow wow that's that, and how long was the training the which one <laughs> um the original one the, yeah. it, it was it was um four months of theory okay and then you had um I had four four Fridays of training and that was for um the cosmetic side and then then for the paramedical side it was again the the theory and then you did some face-to-face training as well so yeah it probably a good six months as a package wow wow i love it that is so so good because and it goes to show that sometimes if we're going to stick to something commit to something is um finding the why finding who can help us where do we get the training and seeing if it is needed and doing the research above everything the research because sometimes we go in into something and it's like once we do the research we have that clear mission that clear statement where are we going and it gives us direction and structure for so you're doing a campaign donate the nipple campaign tell us about that yeah okay so 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 i with the prosthetics, um, the sort of yeah. external silicon and nipple areola prosthetics, I'll just sort of touch base on that so then you can understand why I'm doing the campaign. Uh, so the 3D, so the prosthetics is um, basically I have one here for you. Okay. Um, so I'll put one on my forearm so you can see what it looks like. Um, and I so, saw the video. It looks very Oh, did real. you? Yeah. So it's, it's what, what the, the aim of that is to, um, so women who've had a mastectomy and, and or double or single and men. Okay. Wow. And there's a the transgender community. So a whole big community of people who've had breast trauma. They creating the three D nipple and areola tattoo is is a wonderful thing. However, when you look at it in the mirror, it does look 
3D. But when you look at it on the side or down, it's still flat surface. And so these um, prosthetics, what they do, what they are is it's, you take a, a mould of an existing nipple and areola and then you proceed to make the silicon um, prosthesis and then you use colour and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know if you can see. Yes. Okay. That looks real. So, yeah. Well, that's somebody's, um, you know, uh, donation. So, oh, nice. so what happened is women who've had a double mastectomy, they don't, I've got molds and, and, and a few different molds for them to pick from, but there is no nipple or areola that's the same. And, and trust me, I look at them all day. So I thought, well, I want to, because they'd kind of go, mine was a little bit bigger and mine was a little bit smaller or a little bit wider. And I thought, okay, I need more, more samples, more, 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 more. So during um, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I just sort of decided that instead of um, creating, you know, a, a campaign for, for monetary do donations, I thought of something a little bit different. So instead of people people giving money, they can give a, a mould of their nipple and areola so that when people want to choose yeah. from a variety of different um, silicons and moulds, they, they have a library of them. And the campaign has taken off... It has become so big at this point in time um, because everybody wants to donate. Everyone thinks it's a brilliant idea and they're like, this is so much better than just handing over some money and, yeah, and not yeah, sort yeah. of knowing where it's going or what yeah. it's going towards, whereas this is, takes 15 minutes of your time. I take a mould, looks like this. Okay, and and then I go ahead and make the prosthetic using that, and then women and men have a variety to choose from, and I think that's really supporting other people, but in a different way. So yeah, that's really exciting. That is going to be huge. Wow! <laughs> um, and I'm so excited for that one. Say, for example, when someone gives the the mold of their nipple, and you have a gallery, how do we? How does it work? Like from the mold that you have as a gallery, you're able to then make many molds. Yes. So basically, I'm. I do. It's very. I'm bespoke. So I mm -hmm. am the face of my business. I'm the face of Pro Cosmetic. Um, that you, if you, if you sort of reach out, you won't speak to anybody else. You, as you know, you came straight mm -hmm. through to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically I do everything from scratch. I, um, take the mold, I go away, I make the silicones. And the point of this is if somebody say you wanted, um, I have a client from the UK yeah. who has what, who's ordered a, a silicon nipple nerola prosthesis. And so what I'm going to do is with all the different molds that I have, I might create say 10 prosthesis for her um, because she's given me a bit of a rundown of what she's after and so I'll look at my moles and I'll go okay these this fits the description of yeah. what she's wanting I'll make 10 mock-ups and, and and then send her pictures and just show her and go here you go pick one and she and and the goal the the point with all of this donate your nipple campaign is if you're going to donate your nipple and it's not your real nipple it's just a mold of your nipple I have to be clear on that um you have to name your mold so when clients um, ring in and they kind of go, I want this one, I don't want them to say, I want one, two, three. I, I want them to say, I want the Nikki uh, because it's important that we all sort of, we're doing, we're all in this together and we're all supporting each other. And so it's, yeah, everyone's sort of, some people naming it after their moms who've passed away, you know, who were very close. Like there's just, a, it's such a beautiful thing. It's just really nice to see. Wow, wow. And as well, like you said, with regards to giving the, the money, it's like, okay, that's it. But with this, it's like you are always part of the journey. You exactly. are. Yeah. Yeah. That is, so that it, is the key. And the fact that you name it is, is, you know, I mean, back in the day, I don't know if they still do it. Like you, you breastfeed somebody else's baby if your baby couldn't, if you couldn't, you know, like it's, it sort of takes me back to that time where, yeah. you know, we, we all sort of supported each other in some way. And I think in this day and age and in this current climate, it's really important um, for us to connect in some way and show kindness. And it doesn't have to be through the monetary value of I've handed money and I feel good now. It's 15 minutes of your time and you really are making a huge difference to somebody's life. And I think that's that's the key here. And you are part of the journey and the fact that it's named after you is just even 
more exciting. <laughs> I know, I know. It's kind of like leaving a legacy because it doesn't, it won't, it won't only help one person, but it can help many. Yeah, um, absolutely. Nikki, how? So it takes fifteen minutes, and then how does that work? Is it like a home kit, or would they come to the clinic? They how, have to come to me. Yeah. So as I was saying before, with with me being the face of everything and doing everything, yeah. I don't send the mold kit to anybody. Um, if you can't get to see me, then unfortunately, I can't. I can't create this for you. The whole point of this, it's a personal experience. I yeah. and and there's a, a certain way of when you apply the mold. I need to capture the intricate details of the nipple, nipple and areola, and somebody who hasn't been trained in that won't quite know how to do that and and you know what stuff to look for so um no there's no sending at home kids it's it's either you we do it here face to face or um you can pick from the variety of, of samples that i have and i'll make one from an existing nipple and areola that i have such as a lady in the uk that's what she's going to do so yeah, it's it's all personal. It's face to face at this stage. Once we get the prosthesis, once we get it, um, what does how does it look for for the individual? Does it mean that like the cleaning, or does it mean what what, what yeah. are, how does it work? Good question. So basically, it stays bonded to the skin um, for about seven days. Um, okay. I recommend seven days. I know some women have wore it for a little bit longer, but that's sort of you know your body and you know yeah. if you know it's getting itchy or whatever it is. So it can stay bonded for seven days. So that means you can go to the gym, you can go swimming, um, the sauna, whatever it might be. Um, and and I know it. You know I've worn them in the shower and yeah. and worn them on during lockdown for a couple days just to make sure that it's you know what I'm trying to sort of talk about um if it does work and it does work it stayed on for a couple days so we were in the shower so you know you can do it whatever you can in seven days and if you choose to then take it off or you'd have to take it off and clean it so I provide you with a little bit of glue and a little bit of cleaner and in this and a beautiful package um and then you can clean it and reapply it or you can just you know wear it on a special occasion or you can just wear it under your bra um I find that women most of the women that I've, I've given this to um the two two important factors for them is the bra and a white top and I I um I think with the bra, they've got one existing nipple and then nothing on the other side. Having um, having the prosthetic in the bra matching the other side is a game changer for them. Yeah. And what you and I might kind of not even think about, kind of, yeah, it's yeah. just a bra or whatever, but for them it's such a huge moment yeah, yeah, yeah. to be able to yeah. see that and even wear it under a white top because, you know, you can see a bit of a bump on one side that's yeah. existing but on the other side it's flat and, and that – a lot of women, they don't like that at all. That's what makes them feel quite self-conscious. So when they have the prosthetic there matching the other side, it's just, oh, it's a, it's just huge for them. Not something I, that you and I might not think about yeah, on a yeah. daily basis, but for them, it's it's so important. And it goes back down to body image because I saw um, a picture on your post on the Insta on of the white bra and it looks so real. It just looks yeah. like lingerie. Yes. So, yes, so it just goes... Key. That is the key, and I just, as I said, like that, that makes such a big difference um, for them, and 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 even as you said, body image, even just, you know, being intimate with your partner, or just, you know, um, you know, you could do all the the aesthetic, you know, you know, treatments to your face or your body, but if you don't feel good on the inside, yes. and you're still un- unhappy on the inside, yes. then what, what you're doing is pointless, and so I find that this part of the the treatment pathway for these clients genuinely does make them feel good on the inside and i and i really do think that it is a game changer it really does bring back some normality or some womanhood or that feeling of feeling attractive again yeah. and i think that's it really does make a big difference holistic for the holistic healing 
Yeah, a hundred, a hundred percent. Because it just looks so real, it looks so beautiful. And like you do say, sometimes as females, we don't take it for granted. But the truth is, if we wear a white t-shirt, it's sunny. We're out in the sun. You can see the bump, even when girls have piercings. We can see the piercing through the top. So it's just that attention to detail and knowing that the prosthesis can bring back confidence, can bring healing, can feel like normality again. We're we'll being intimacy. We're we'll be on the beach. We're we'll be just wearing lingerie or wearing that white top because it, yeah it gives us that that healing that we need and that confidence when it comes to the areola tattoo um what does that look like the sessions and the top up and the healing so um a 3d nipple and areola tattoo or areola repigmentation yeah. it's it, it's all sort of you know sort of falls under the same umbrella um and what that is is it's two sessions so any okay. it, it's sort of it's part of the big umbrella of cosmetic tattooing yeah. um it, but although it's it, it's like medical tattooing so you have a session one where you come in and we sort of you know we might play with colors and create shapes and all that kind of stuff and then it's all about creating the base of it and at session two which is generally six weeks later um you know that's when I really get into the if, if it's a 3d nipple and areola tattoo into the the shading and the contouring and the highlighting and all that kind of stuff and then it is a semi-permanent tattoo so sem even though they call it permanent makeup it is semi-permanent meaning okay. that you do need refresh appointments yeah. um every few years um maybe five years maybe 12 months it all depends like if you're the type of person that wants to keep injecting the colors in it to make it look more intense you'd come back every 12 months some people i find even though it fades i think a nipple and areola that fades actually looks more natural okay. um because all our nipples and all our areolas, they're not equal in colour. Um, yeah. And there's some, are, some are darker in certain spots and all that kind of stuff. So some women are just happy to have something there and and come back five years later and kind of go, okay, I'm ready for my touch-up again um, or my refresh. But it's it's the whole notion of having something there, not yeah. having a blank you know, reminder every day of looking in the mirror, kind of yeah. going, I am reminded of the trauma that I went through with, you know, my breast cancer or whatever it might be. So having something there is is makes a huge difference. And I'm finding that women are also now doing the prosthesis as well as a tattoo at the same oh. time because when you take away the prosthetic and you don't have the tattoo there, then it's still blank. Um, yeah. Whereas when they take the prosthetic away, then they've yes. got the tattoo there. Um, so, yeah, so it's – it's uh, some and some women are choosing to have nothing at all and, and staying blank and, and, you know, and just accepting it for what it is. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the Donate Your Nipple campaign and the tattooing and the, you know, prosthetics and all that kind of stuff it's about empowering people with choice and giving people an option on their treatment pathway so if they don't want to have a nipple reconstruction or a tattoo they can go for a prosthetic or they might not want a prosthetic or tattoo and go I want a nipple reconstruction it's it's not just saying the only way you can feel better about yeah. yourself is if you do this it's about you have options and you pick what suits you and if you choose nothing then that's totally okay as well I love it I love it um so we know females are now going for both how do we know if if a, if if a client comes to you and is unsure how would she know which one is which one well, I, I normally, what I would normally do is I would place a prosthesis on their, on their breast and then honestly they would kind of go, oh, my gosh, yeah. like I, I heard about it, we spoke about it, mm -hmm. I saw pictures of it, but until I've seen it on me, it's a completely different, you know, um, feel, look, and, and then we also do the drawing, like I might do a, a sketch yeah. of, a, you know, a a nipple and areola on the breast and they kind of then go okay or they might go the prosthesis is not for me not a really big nipple kind of girl um mm. i'll just go for the tattoo so okay. that's sort of how we do it okay nice nice so say for for example a client comes to you on the day what can she expect like w would it be like you seeing them and, and bringing out the gallery or how does it work so um are we is this for prosthesis 
Um, for prosthesis. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So basically for prosthesis, the way it works is if you have an existing nipple and areola, mm-hmm. we would meet um, at one of my clinics that I work at and I will take a mould of okay. your existing nipple and areola. And, and not just one, I'll take a couple moulds, I'll do some measurements, um, we look at colours and I'll take photos and all that kind of stuff. And then I literally go away and then I um, make a silicon um, prosthesis mimicking the mold and the pictures yeah. and all that kind of stuff that I've taken. If you don't have an existing nipple and areola, mm. then we don't need to meet face to face because I obviously can't take a mold. Yeah. But what we do is we do these sort of things that we're doing. We'll do a live chat or we'll do some texting or we'll do like in the UK, I did a, you know, a, a Google Meet and we'll, I kind of go, this is what I've got. You know, have you thought about, you know, sizing so I ask them to go away and you know most of the girls kind of go I love my friend's nipple and areola so I'm going to measure hers and I'll send you a picture of hers so we're you know we're getting our friends involved or you know she'll say my my friend's got a really nice color can you make it like that and that's okay. how that's how it works okay nice 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 no yeah I love it and then say with um that's a prosthesis and say for the areola the tattooing yeah yeah, yeah, so for the tattooing, um, basically we would meet um, at, at again at one of the clinics and then um, we have a chat. Obviously, I need to have a look at, you know, the history of the surgery. Um, have they had any infections? Have they had radiation? All that sort of plays a role, um, you know, with the healing and the fading and, and what medication you want. Um, you know, when it's diet flaps, um, you know, you probably know what that is when they take tummy um, to create the breasts or the back or the thighs or whatever it is it's it's you know I have to we do that sort of consult everything's done um I don't do con- consultations prior to be able to give them the same answers that I would give them at an appointment it's I because I, I would be charging for no there's no reason to do that so I know I know what I know and I know that I know what I know so I just kind of go let's just we'll have a consultation if you're not happy and you're still not comfortable then we're not going to proceed into the tattoo um most of the time I don't take any appointments until I screen the client and we talk on the phone um because if they're not ready and they feel pressure to see me because the surgeon said I think it's time now for a tattoo or a partner or somebody said you should get a tattoo sometimes they're not ready um themselves and if they're not ready then it's not gonna we won't connect and it's not gonna work they still won't be happy with what they get so I kind of make sure that they're ready and they're um you know committed to to the whole process and then we meet um we do the consult I draw with a pen what like a pencil or an eyebrow whatever I've got um we play with colors and we put the because what what they think they want versus the colors on the skin and and the skin undertone it just can be completely different so um we play with colors and then we start we start the whole process so it's they're long appointments i i see only two clients a day um and i could work for up to two and a half to three hours wow i love it and then and then say like you say so the male and the female is very different yeah the design's very different or the creation's very different because you're a woman's, um, you know, nipple and areola area is quite softer. So obviously the nipple's bigger. Um, you know, we do these fine lines and we're trying to make it look really protruding and, you know, it's it's a softer sort of look. But when we have um, um, transgender that have transitioned from female to male, they want the opposite to that. They don't want, they've had that. They don't want that. Um, so I have to make it, uh, the, the shape's smaller. It's a, it's not always a round shape, um, you know, so, and the nipple's a lot smaller. So there's a, a, there's a different way of, you have to make it look protruding, but not make it look feminine, um, which is, it, it sounds easy, but it's actually a lot, it's more technical. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah. Wow, it's, it's, it's amazing that we, we have options. Options is better than no options. Where it be uh, the prosthesis, where it be the tattooing, where it be for males, where it be females, whatever the case is, that it can be done so that it brings healing to everyone. Um, Nikki, what is your favorite book? My favorite book? That's interesting. Um, I'm, 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 I don't know. I can't just give me a second. <laughs> or, or, or your favorite podcast. Do you listen to podcasts? Um, 
I try. I try. I try to listen to podcasts because I'm a mobile server, so I travel, um, you know, between. Um, so the and audio, stuff. yeah. Yeah, the audio and, so, and then sometimes I just don't want any noise, to be honest. Yeah. Um, in the car, I just want blank um, and I just want to hear what's happening outside. But my favourite book, um, I, 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 actually, I don't know. Ask me another one. <laughs> Nikki, you're amazing. Favourite um, movie? Well, yes. How did you know that? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Um, I have to say, I have to say, it's, you're going to laugh, but I have to say Dirty Dancing. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely movie. I like that movie. It just it just takes me back to my childhood and watching it and just, you know, back then when everything was so naive and it was just yes. cool and it was just the dancing and I think yes. it was just the dancing that I think, I think that drew me into that. Knowing where you are now, knowing how you have evolved from the different jobs you had from corporate to now opening your own business, what advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, okay. Follow your gut. Follow your gut is so important. Um, and, you know, without sounding not nice, I just think, you know, your your thing that you want to do and whatever it might be if it's a whatever it is it's your seed and I think you need to protect your seed and that's what I would say to myself um protect your seed and this is what I would say to my son every day before he would go to school be vigilant and watch your surroundings and I think I would say that to myself going back now saying when it comes to you know starting this out and just you know follow your gut um stay true to yourself and yeah. and you know nurture your seed you know don't don't keep your cup full if that makes okay. sense yeah, keep yeah. your cup full and anything that overflows you can give it to it, that everyone else can take it and that's not my quote by the way but I think when you're younger and you're just, you know, one of those type of people and, and I am like that quite generous and giving and all that kind yeah. of stuff, I think you end up leaving yourself exhausted um, and you're trying to appease everybody else. So I would say to you, to myself, um, you know, keep your cup full and, and everything, everyone can have the overflow and just follow your gut and follow your dreams and don't let anybody get in your way because when I was about to do the prosthetics I had a lot of people say to me why would you do that who's going to want that you know a whole range of things you know why would I want a prosthetic when I would get a tattoo and I my gut was so powerful in saying go 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 and I did and it's the best decision that I've ever made so keep following your gut it's it's a such a powerful tool but you've got to be intuitive to it yes and yeah and you've got to be aware of it as well so and nurture your seed whatever it is you're deciding to do like keep it to yourself and nurture it because not everybody is your friend powerful powerful yeah and that, yeah. that w with that comes a lot of wisdom with that comes a lot of exercising your intuition what how how was you able to exercise your intuition to where you are now oh because you you get burnt and when you get burnt and you 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 get there's a lot of deceit or there's a lot yeah. of people, you know, who you think are your people, but they're not really your people, whatever it is, life lessons. I mean, yeah. that's life, right? Life lessons. And every time there's a hurdle, you yeah. become more resilient. So, and, and you need to go through things like that in order to yeah. prepare you for more. There's always going to be those things happening in life. But yeah. if you are more in tune to it and you are um, have gone through it, you become more resilient to it. So you handle it better. And and I think as a business woman, um, if you're a good business person, um, you it's through hurdles and all that kind of stuff. It's that's how you know how good you are in your business yeah. is how you overcome those hurdles. And if you do, and as you do, you get better and better and better. So each time there's a disruption or there's a deceit or whatever it yeah. might be, I would kind of go, okay, that was, that's happened for a reason. That was meant to happen. What's the lesson in this? And then we move forward. Wow. That's, that's so powerful because sometimes we get stuck in our emotions and we're like, well, I've worked so hard, so many hours to get to where I am for something to happen. So 
just yeah. being able to reflect, being able to sit down and actually see something from a different angle and say, okay, what can we overcome this? What can we learn from this? How can we do things different? Yeah. Well, Absolutely. I, I'm sorry. I just think it's so every time. And that's one thing I will probably, another thing I would say to myself was, why is this happening? What's the lesson? Because it won't, might not make sense in that moment, but yeah. it always makes sense later on. Yeah. And, and if you can, you know, go through the motions, allow yourself to go through the motions, um, respect it, respect the emotions that you're feeling, but then go, okay, it's time to move on and time to re-strategize. And that's not happening because there's a reason for it. And that's happened to me quite a lot in the business where I really, really wanted to connect with a certain surgeon or a certain clinic or, yeah. and I was like, and it just wasn't happening. And I was just like, it's, it's, I have to accept that it's just not meant to be for me. And then I moved on. And then when you close one door, honestly, there's another door waiting. So, and, and it that. makes sense afterwards it doesn't make sense in that moment but it yeah. always will make sense yeah only but it doesn't make sense in that moment only because we're still mi missing a piece of the puzzle so once we're once time has passed once we're in the future and certain things happen then we can put the pieces together and pinpoint why things didn't happen or what you needed to go through to be able to be where you are now um nikki if you had a billboard what would it say on the side of the highway it could be anything. You have a big billboard on the side of the highway. What would it say? Anything, not business related, anything at all. It could be it absolutely would be, hey, dull, because I, <laughs> anyone who knows me knows that I'll always go, hey, dull, or like, so I just, it would all, if someone's driving past and they see, hey, dull, I think it would put a smile on their face. So I, it would be, hey, dull. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, so, so simple and so polite and so sweet at the same yeah, time. It's just, just, and it's just a reminder, just, hey, like, you know, I see you, you know. Yeah. Oh, I acknowledge you. I appreciate you. Yeah, it is. I hear it you. Is. I see you. And, you know, you are worthy. And I think it's so important to, um, to remind people and remind ourselves first and foremost you are worthy and you know you just keep going and you know um you know not even when people say you're making changes for people and you you know you're changing your healer and all that kind of stuff I kind of as great as that is I just you have to look after yourself first yeah. and foremost um because if you don't, then you can't continue doing what you're doing. Yeah. So, you know, every day you've got to remind yourself, I am worthy, you know. And there's fears and all that kind of stuff that come into play all the time. Um, but if you just, you know, are reminded every day, I see you, I hear you, I feel you and all that kind of stuff, that it's, it's those things are free. You know, yeah. even just smiling at someone. I've started to smile at people in the street. I know it sounds weird, but I thought I'm going to do a little sort of test and, Sometimes when someone walks past me, I'll smile and it's, they, they're sort of taken a little bit of back going, yeah. oh, she's smiling at me. But when they smile back, it's actually a really, really nice smile because I kind of go, they're really smiling because it's, they're shocked A, but B, <laughs> they really like that someone's just smiled at them. It's so genuine. Yeah, if we can just start doing things like that a little bit, I just think it makes, it makes me feel good also just letting people know that, you know, I'm here for you, I hear you, um, but I've also got to keep myself in check mm -hmm. as well. So it's all about holistic healing for everybody. Wow, that's so powerful. I actually interviewed um, a gentleman, so his name is Josh Sola, and what he would do is he would write kind letters and put them in different places. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, that takes an effort. That is, that is, um, that deserves a clap because it's in our schedules and our daily activities by the end of the day you kind of go oh I can't can't be bothered like I'm just yeah, exhausted yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. um but for somebody to to you know get a pen and paper and write something I just the effort the conscious effort to sit down and take time out of your day to actually do this even and, just to smile like it, yeah you kind of go should I shouldn't I should I shouldn't I and yeah. when you do you kind of go it like releases the good endorphins it's great yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um there was one point where he actually did this and the girl started crying and um yeah. he went up to her and said are you okay and he said and she said to him today 
last year my un- my brother died in a car accident oh i've got chills yeah 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 see 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 that's all about it's like the billboard hey like i see you yeah. um you know i might not always but i'm um, i acknowledge your existence yeah. and 100%. i think that's just so powerful i really do yeah, a hundred percent. Current climate of where our world is at the moment, yeah. and coming out of COVID, and so much insecurity, and oh, it's just mental health and all this stuff. And I just think you know, small acts of kindness do really go a long way because he didn't know that she was going through that, and that letter might have made a big difference for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's beautiful. And it causes a ripple effect, a smile, and now now you've put a stranger in a in a good way and and ready to start their day off, you know. Yeah, and so I sort of it, do like the shock value of seeing their face go. I don't know, should I smile at her or should I smile? Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's yeah, it is. It, it probably made her feel good for a second just to smile back, and and you know. So I just think it's you know a whole bunch of things is it does make a difference to just getting up every day and just you know if you can get up in if you can just get up every day then that's a win I think yeah yeah it's it's true Nikki tell us about your services tell us about your socials okay so um currently um my main services are 3D newborn areola tattooing, um, areola repigmentation, um, and I, I th- this is open to anybody. I'm not there's you know trans community, um, males, females, whatever LGBTQ, wh- whoever. Okay, um, so 3D nipple areola tattooing, areola repigmentation, external nipple and areola silicon prosthesis, and and the and the campaign of donate your nipple. But I have to throw in there. Um, I did have been doing a few belly button tattoos. Um, How's that so, going? Yeah, so women um, who've had um, um, do, do you know mummy makeovers or oh jumps? when they when they get the tummy tuck? Yeah, so some women unfortunately haven't been able to get their belly button shape back, and so they're flat. There's absolutely no belly button. Belly button. So I um, tattoo a belly button on them um and recently i also um created a silicon nipple uh, sorry silicon belly button prosthetic wow. um, that she can glue on and take off if she wants um so medical tattooing can fall under anything yeah. like that as well so yeah but the belly button's pretty cool wow. interesting yeah. yeah very interesting wow yeah. i didn't expect that because sometimes you see it in um sometimes I've seen theatres and, and what they do is they save it. It's like a little circle and they save it and they put it to the side so that then when they do everything and they finish, they put it back. Yeah, so that and for her, unfortunately, didn't work like that. But anyway, she's it's it looked I mean, it looks amazing. I will put it on my socials. So my socials are Facebook. I, I don't I have an account. I very rarely go on it because they keep blocking me. Um, I have a lot Why? of trouble with my social media. Oh, because I have a lot of nipple and areolas. Um, oh. So with um, Facebook, I just, I've just i been blocked for 45 days on end. So I just oh. don't know. I've got a little spill on my Facebook page sort of saying, you know, go to Instagram. Instagram's yes. a little bit more open and a little bit, you know, but what happens is when I do post a 3D nipple and areola tattoo on Instagram, it, it doesn't get, get sent out worldwide. It just goes to my followers. Um, oh. They yeah, they deem it as a sensitive sort of, you know, okay. topic, even though it's life and it's yeah. real and it's yeah, happening yeah, yeah. every day. With the prosthetics, I get blocked on Instagram. So I can't showcase them. So I can showcase them as you saw them on in the bra or on my forearm. But okay. if I showcase them around the breast area, then it's just I just get blocked. Um, so I do have so at Pro Cosmetic is my Instagram account and my website. My website is very detailed. I think you've been on it. Um, so that's that's the best way to sort of go. And if and probably Instagram too. And then you know I might say go head to the website and then you can head to the website. But there's links that connect everything. So that's where I am at on socials. Very difficult for me with social media when it comes to talking about my work and showcasing my work. What about TikTok? 
Well, ha- have you tried TikTok? No, I haven't done. I yeah, I haven't looked. To be honest, as I said before, I run my own show, so yeah. social media is a full time job. It is a full time yeah. job. Tell me about it. I'm just <laughs> like, I usually tend to do audiograms for every episode. I'm like, I think I'm on episode seventy two, and the audiogram that I have currently on my profile is number twenty five, twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. I know. know. So, so I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so I do. It's, yeah, so I've been very slack with my Instagram account, but I guess in a way I'm at the point where I kind of go, people know what I can do. And, you know, I've already sort of established that sort of, you know, thing for myself. But it is TikTok, everyone says, what about TikTok and Twitter? Because I think they are not as strict. Um, okay. But. Yeah, Twitter, I, TikTok is something that I should consider, I know, maybe in the new year after maybe. Donate Your Nipple campaign. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Would you ever go into teaching, write a book, give lectures? I would love to write a book. I would love, I would love to write a book. I have always sort of, I've done some writing courses and I do love to write. Um, I would love to write a book, yes, and that is something I would consider in the future. Um, Teaching what I know, I would not do that at this point and I'll tell you why, because I don't follow the rules. Okay. I don't follow the rules. I make up my own rules. I learn the basics and I learn the, um, you know, the foundations and yeah. understanding pigments and, you know, the the medical, what you can and can't do yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. But teaching somebody to create a 3D nipple and areola tattoo, it changes for me all the time. I, there's no formula. I, yeah. I never make one that looks the same. It's the same as the prosthetics. You yeah. know, there's there might be, you know, a, a training module, but I, I completely don't follow it. I try different – I'm always trying different things. So um, – lecture yes definitely you know I'd love to be able to talk and be part of conferences and and I would love to sort of head internationally and all that kind of stuff um but but the book would become first out of all that nice nice Nikki I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to come on Gentle Touch I know you're super duper mega busy um I just wanted to say thank you for being that light in 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 the industry in for 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 that niche for oncology patients for girls for individuals that may have had plastic surgery and they may have not got the results that 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 they needed or mm-hmm. or just you know because I've never heard in um plastic surgery that girls are left without a a belly button like I would not be happy if I'm left without a belly button this was not in the agreement um, yeah but it just goes to show how you save the day how how you bring back that confidence that self love that reassurance that 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 is okay like hey though I see you you're accepted things things are gonna work out absolutely so, yeah, so by I you just, yeah. so by you doing your services and by you you create um that light in other people's in other people's lives to get on and and just heal and and progress and and just look after their mental health because it's like they've overcome so much trauma, so much pain, so much hurt, so much insecurity that to now finding finding you is like, oh my gosh, wow, like she's like an angel. So I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say that I hear you too. And I and I think you're doing amazingly. And just, you know, you have the platform to be able to share this information worldwide. And I just, and I know it's, a, you know, you know it takes a lot of your time. Um, however, you're doing a great job. And I'm so glad we connected. And thank you for reaching out. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Thank you. 